I'm excited to present some of our work, um, ongoing work. Um, I'm Pubudu Honda Kumra. I'm a biologist and a team lead here at AMSL. Um, so some of the work that I'm going to share today um, is looking at this uh, root rhizosphere and trying to capture that in a near native uh, environment. Um, so I think we've heard uh, a lot of good talks over the days, past couple of days, um, and I want to echo some of those um, presenters and say the rhizosphere is one of the most uh, dynamic interfaces on the earth. And um, this fosters numerous inter and int intra-kingdom interactions. And these interactions ultimately lead to resilient ecosystems. Um, but visualizing these interactions in a near native setting is a grand challenge. Um, we know there are lots of plant, 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 microbe uh, communication that happens below ground. Um, but capturing them in an ecosystem scale is challenging. And over the years, there has been um, numerous um, developments that are addressing this issue and is enabling us um, to visualize this hidden half. Um, some of these elegant uh, microfluidic platforms or the, uh, some of the sophisticated ecofabs that we heard about um, two days ago, um, those have really pushed the field forward and that allows us to look at uh, these uh, molecular interactions that are happening below ground. However, because of some of the temporal and spatial restrictions, um, we are not able to use the existing devices, uh, for instance, to study um, a root that's grown out in the field. Uh, for example, energy crops, say like something like sorghum. Oh, and another limitation we see is the, the size of these units and then highly controlled um, environment that they, that they sit in. So we want to try to um, find ways where we can probe the plant microbe interactions in that near native environment. So what we have um, put together is a workflow, which we call our 3D root cartography platform. Um, so here we are using, um, let me get my pointer. Sorry. Um, so here we are um, using these uh, RISO grids. These are 3D printed um, grids. Um, and we are using this customized setup to hold our root system so that we can preserve the root system architecture. And we can use um, a variety of growth medium here, um, soil, sand, um, your choice of uh, growth medium here. And then we can grow our experiment in this um, custom built riser grid fitted 3D pods. And then we are using the XCT platform that we have here at EMSO um, to image these roots um, without disturbing them. Uh, once we have captured our root um, images, then we can use this um, system uh, for downstream processes. So uh, what we do is we use these riser grids um, to preserve the coordinates of the root system um, and dissect them for either metabolites or for 16 net sequencing. And because we know where each root piece is coming from, we are now able to map that information back to the reconstructed root. So this is our approach. Um, so this is an example uh, where I have used um, the RISO grids. So as you can see, these are modular units, 3D printed um, RISO grids. Um, and depending on your experiment, you can um, decide on the length of these parts, the diameter of these parts. And here I have used sorghum and I'm using a local fetal soil for this experiment. This is a five week old sorghum grown on this uh, riser grid pitted pods. And like I mentioned, these riser grids are, have four quadrants, which we've labeled A through D. And these quadrants allows us to preserve that 
3 d um, coordinates in each depth. Uh, and finally, we can see the see this um, root um, and the rise of root reconstructed after um, capturing all of that through x-ray uh, CT. And this is a video. Now you are looking through this um, soil column and blue lines are the roots. So you start to see the roots appearing and disappearing as well as the, the grid itself. Um, and you are looking through this uh, pot. And you see that we have to pick um, our rhizogrid material carefully because uh, sometimes when they have the same density as the soil or the root, it becomes really challenging to uh, segment these uh, roots. Uh, so this is again the same root system uh, from sorghum. So we are now, we, we, because we are using these rhizogrids and they are helping us to maintain the um, orientation of the roots because they're acting as scaffold uh, in this, uh, we are able to preserve the root system uh, architecture. So once we have uh, these root images, uh, next, like I mentioned before, we can now segment this root um, into pieces and we can use them either for extracting metabolites um, or for looking at the microbial diversity through 16S sequencing uh, and with any number of uh, downstream analysis that you like to couple this. So this could be looking at transcriptomics or metabolomics or proteomics. So all of uh, the information um, can be mapped back because we are preserving their coordinates. So this is an example uh, where we are using uh, this same root system and we are looking at the metabolite abundance uh, and their distribution along the root. So these are five selected examples. Um, and the, the metabolite abundance, relative abundance, uh, purple being the high, uh, relatively high abundant and yellow being low abundant. Uh, so if you look at aspartate in this example, um, you start to see that it's localized more to the crown of the roots and less abundant throughout the root. And for example, phenylalanine uh, seems to be relatively low abundant throughout the root. So this is just to give you an idea and an example where to, to show the heterogeneity between um, these metabolites and their abundance and their localization along the roots. This is another example where now, again, we are using the same root system, same information captured through uh, by dissecting each root piece. Uh, this is an example of the microbial abundance. We are mapping five different microbial genera here. And you see that, again, you start to see the heterogeneity between uh, the, the distribution of these microbial genera. Um, in this first example, you see Pseudosanthomonas seems to be low abundant um, on the top of the root, but as you move uh, towards the growing tips, it seems to be more abundant. And braided rhizobium in this case seems to be highly abundant and colonizing the whole root system. So these are interesting observations that we can start to uh, see uh, by preserving this uh, 3D uh, structure in three-dimensional space. So another thing that we have started to do with these is we have uh, now, we have the metabolite information, we have the microbial information. So we are asking what are some of the correlations uh, we can see um, using this data. So here the metabolites are illustrated in uh, orange squares and microbes in uh, blue circles. And there are positive correlations in green lines. And the strength of the correlation is um, shown with the thickness of the lines. So you start to see um, certain patterns here. For example, here, there's a, a number of metabolites that are uh, correlated with a certain microbial genus. 
or there are few metabolites that are acting as maybe perhaps hubs. Um, and a majority of genera are interacting with those uh, metabolites. So again, this, this is ongoing work. So we have started to look into all of this uh, to really understand are there differences uh, along the depths as well as are there differences among the quadrants in each depth uh, and what can we learn from that? So uh, now with this setup, um, we are able to ask a variety of questions and we are able to um, preserve as much as we can that um, near native environment because we are using um, soil as our growth medium and we are using XCT uh, to capture the roots without disturbing uh, them, and then um, harvesting them for downstream analysis. Uh, one of the future directions uh, that we're taking is uh, looking at impacts of drought and how does the root system uh, behave and how does the microbial and metabolite profiles change along the uh, root system. Um, so on your left, here you see a control root. Again, these are comparable um, five-week-old sorghum roots grown in a local field soil. Um, you start to see the, the differences in the root um, length sizes um, and the number of roots uh, with these XCT images. Uh, and here on the right is the, the drought root. Um, and, and this, again, this is something that we are um, working on right now. So we are looking through the metabolite and microbial information we are gathering and trying to understand what are those differences. This is another example uh, where we are looking at um, root colonization of engineered bacterial strains. In this example, I have used sand as my growth medium, as you can see here, again, using the same risogrids. Uh, and uh, 3D printed the uh, pots. Um, um, and we have used uh, fluorescently labeled uh, microbes here in this example, uh, a GFP tagged version shown in green here and RFP tagged version strain uh, shown in red here um, to understand really like what are those uh, localization patterns uh, of these engineered strains. And, and um, in this example, we are also coupling this uh, with cell sorting. So we can um, try to understand the, the number numbers along the roots. Uh, and another future direction um, is um, developing um, a software tool where we would be able to visualize these, um, a variety of data types. So this is taking inspiration from the human microbiome project uh, where they, they've spatially mapped uh, metabolites throughout the human body. Um, so taking inspiration from that, we've started to uh, put together um, all of this uh, molecular information that we develop um, using this system um, into a software tool. So this is something we look forward to. Um, and then we would be able to uh, visualize the, the root and the spatial distribution of the metabolites and microbes um, in three-dimensional space. With that, I want to thank everyone uh, who was part of this project. We have a great team as highlighted in this uh, slide. Um, and we, uh, this was funded by the persistence control of engineered functions in complex soil microbiomes, SFA. Um, part of this work was performed at EMSL. With that, um, I want to thank you all for joining us today, and uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you so much, Kubudu. That was a really fascinating talk. Um, I really loved seeing the future directions about trying to map sort of the 3D visualizations of uh, where you can find different metabolites along the route. Thanks, Alison. Uh, if anybody has any questions, please put them in the chat. Um, there is one, how did you segment your XCT images? So that would be a question for Thomas and Anil, who are the experts uh, doing uh, XCT uh, uh, image processing. 
uh, I think I'd have to defer to them for that. 